This is Andrew Jones at Climate Interactive, and a few minutes ago, my colleague, Dr. Beth Sawin here at Climate Interactive, sent me this uh, report, this uh, article in The Guardian, spreading rock dust in fields could remove vast amounts of CO2 from the air, enhance mineralization, they call it, uh, other terms for it, and um, seems like it could really help. And I want to use the En-ROAD simulator that we built here at Cl Climate Interactive with MIT Sloan Sustainability Initiative to put it in perspective about how much it can contribute to addressing climate change. I do that with the En-ROADS simulator, which you see the interface here. You can go and check it out yourself. So how would you test a policy like that? How much it can really help? Well, the best views are to go here and look at this view of CO2 removals. And over on the right, to see CO2 emissions and removals, where you can compare over on the right, land use CO2, energy CO2, F gases, methane, and N2O from 2000 out to 2100, where if we do get any removals that is pulling carbon out of the atmosphere, it will go negative, it will be below the zero line. So let's go see in the, in the report what it says. There's this study that says that in nature, it says that half the farmland could capture 2 billion tons of CO2 each year, 2 billion tons every year. So we go under the uh, assumptions and let's look and see the assumptions that we made. We pulled our numbers from, you can see here, mineralization from the Royal Society study. We thought that the, they thought that the middle point of the estimates was 2.3, so let's bring it down to two. Two billion tons a year as the maximum. And we go over here to carbon removal and click on use detailed settings. We'll scroll past Beck's, past here to enhance mineralization. What percent of the max potential? We're going to want 100%, right, of that 2 billion tons a year. So I'm going to put 100. And before I hit it, think, okay, a vast amount is being removed. A vast amount. Uh, what would that mean for what that would do to future warming? I'm going to hit go, and we're going to watch what happens. And I'll run it several times. So the silver area over on the left is rising up here to 2 gigatons a year. We've assumed it's going to start in 2030 uh, and grow there. It rises. It takes time for this project, this effort to diffuse around the world until it's removing two gigatons a year. And what that does is it brings emissions, you know, removals, uh, increase. You can see the silver area below zero is that's what's being added. I'll hit the replay button. So you can see the two gigatons a year. Now you see it relative to, on top of it, the 120 gigatons of emissions. The result is that the temperature doesn't move down from 4.1 to 4.0. If it was earlier, let's say said it could be one of the soonest things. Let's look at that. I think it was the language. Scientists say that it is one of the things that could happen the soonest. Some scientists say this may be the best near-term way of removing CO2 from the atmosphere. So what if it is really near-term? Not in 2030, but back here in 20. And that actually will bring it down to 4.0 from 4.1. So it looks to be in no way a silver bullet. Probably it would be, a, I think, an exaggeration to call that vast uh, relative to the burning of coal, oil, gas, and black there, and also the methane and the other emissions and forestry emissions. So it is part of a possible suite of policies that could get us down to two degrees. We know the kinds of things that are necessary, keeping carbon, coal, oil, and gas safely in the ground, encouraging renewables, energy efficiency, more perhaps some electrification, cutting deforestation, methane, and other, and other approaches that could get us well below two degrees. It takes more than one seed to plant a garden. This is a very small seed, but could contribute to other actions that get us well below two degrees. Go check it out at enroads.org. Play with the simulator yourself. Maybe you could try some other assumptions, enroads.org.